Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Quakers, bakers, and troublemakers, welcome along to the Joe Spider YouTube channel where we discuss books and little else. And you join me on a solemn and moribund Sunday, folks. Uh, the British microclimate today is doing its best impression of Costa Rica. It has been gushing and pelting with torrents of rain from my waking hour until now and is showing no signs of stopping. Um, what else is going on? There is a stirring cricket final currently taking place be uh, between uh, India and Australia, which I have managed to prize myself away from, uh, from such folder roll. Um, I, th th I've noticed also that Sky Movies are doing a um, marathon of Tolkien's Hobbit, which I, I, I couldn't, I've forgotten just how uh, egregiously it departs from uh, Tolkien's vision. Just spiders the size of Cheltenham and um, just the, the most outrageous, you're half expecting Spider-Man to come round the corner and save the, uh, the, the you know, Thorin's lot or for Gandalf to somehow produce a lightsaber. It's it's fanciful, but it all makes for rather good cinema. But I, as I say, I think it departs from Tolkien's vision somewhat. Um, but nonetheless, I have, as I say, prized myself away from such folder all and entertainment and um, come to give you my end of year book tag. I've seen some of my uh, YouTubing favourites or booktubing favourites uh, do this over the last few days and weeks. Uh, but I just wanted to prolong mine a little bit just so that I could make sure that my view is a little bit more well-rounded and ensure also that um, I get close to the end of the year in order to do the end of year book tag. The idea of doing an end of year book tag late in October is absurd. Um, but yes, anyway, let us progress. <clears throat> Are there any books uh, you started this year and need to finish? Now that implies some sort of... Um, weird uh, uh, pseudo-religious obligation, the idea that I've got some Jesuit over me that's going to wrap me around the knuckles if I don't finish a book. Um, I don't feel obliged to finish anything really, um, but there are two bales, my only two bales of my reading year of 2023 I'm going to show you, and of course that which I'm currently reading also. So we have um, Hannah Arendt's The Origins of Totalitarianism. My views on this have been well broadcast. Uh, it's a a very complex topic that I don't think Hannah Arendt tackles very well. Uh, I spent the best part of a day and a half with it, hours and hours and hours, and found that she uh, didn't excite me or, or, or didn't uh, induce me to read on further, and so I just you know, sent it windmilling uh, uh, through my living room. Um, and yeah, I, I probably, I, well, I aren't going to finish this by the end of the year. I'm probably never, not going to finish this for the next decade. Uh, I think I'm just, I'm either at the wrong place, and our minds are just a complete mismatch, um, but yeah, that, that won't be happening for the time being. Um, <laughs> my other um, rather notorious bail um, was, of course, of um, uh, Mr. Dickens' David Copperfield. I got through probably 70 or 80 percent of this, did the, all the hard work, and then um, the three or four unrealistic, you know, already unrealistic characters started doing even more unrealistic things. Um, Dickens' verbiage was just you know, um, putting a bee in my bonnet and I, you know, it's it would take me, what, best part of two days to just get rid and done, but I, I threw it away um, in the middle of, of October and don't feel like going back now. So although it's something I've started this year, I don't feel as if I need to finish it. Uh, and then, of course, we also have um, Shearer's Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Um, with a uh, thoroughly inoffensive insignia on the front there, because we wouldn't want to be banned from YouTube for having a um, uh, a, a completely ideologically uh, absent uh, 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 sign on the front. And that would be terrible, Joe. Um, but this is, yeah, I'm doing excellently with this. Of course, I'll finish this and review it for uh, BookTube over the coming days and perhaps week. Just got to the point uh, um, in which the supine and... Um, what do you say, doddering Neville Chamberlain has um, been led up the garden path by Herr Hitler and is um, in his in, in adamantly trying to seek peace, has actually just um, sort of heightened the possibility of war inadvertently. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying that and obviously that will be something that I will read and finish for this year. Um, also, right, uh, so the second question, uh, do you have any autumnal books to transition to at the end of the year? Now, the, um, the frontispiece of this, the, the sort of prototypical answer, the, the typical answer is, um, Wuthering Heights, because of course it's got swirling, whirling winds and it's all very barren. 
Um, having read that for Victober as well, I have never, it's uh, the second or third time I've read that now, uh, that's never really got across to me. Um, it's never, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's never really been connoted to me very well. Um, but, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. But um, three ones that are sort of it's reasonably autumnal that I have here. Um, now we have, um, I don't know whether I'm going to read these, but they, 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 will cert they are certainly autumnal transitions nonetheless. Um, this is uh, Agatha Christie's uh, Poirot Solves A Murder on the Orient Express. Um, this has been popularised, first of all, by Peter Ustinov, then David Suchet, and now, um, what's his name, Kenneth Branagh, um, with these big sort of um, pipe cleaner moustache. Um, so the, the famous Orient Express, thundering along on its three days journey across Europe, came to a sudden stop in the night. Snowdrifts blocked the line at a desolate spot somewhere in the Balkans. Everything was deathly quiet. Decidedly, I suffer from the nerves, murmured Hercule Poirot, and fell asleep again. He awoke to find himself very much wanted, for in the night, murder had been committed. Uh, Mr. Ratchet, an American millionaire, was found lying dead in his berth, stabbed. So that's that. Um, it's, again, reasonably thin, but yeah, it happens in snowy surroundings. Um, so I, I suppose that might be a wintry transition, but nonetheless, it's, it, 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 wants you, it, it wants every reader to then become cosseted and makes you shiver and makes you cling to a radiator because it's all very cold. Um, so yeah, my dad's got at least two or three dozen of these Agatha Christie's um, all stockpiled downstairs, which I ought to get through. Um, so yeah, um, it's definitely an autumnal transition. Um, we have what I read, again, one of the things that I read for Victoria was the, um, a little collation of Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories, and we have a standalone Hound of the Baskervilles here with Trevor MacDonald on the back. Uh, he seems to have be he seems to have done a sort of classical collection with whoever on earth it was that published these. Um, Andre Deutsch Classics, uh, published by Andre Deutsch Classics in England. Um, so Trevor MacDonald, who was a um, war correspondent for the BBC, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for many many years, probably what the 80s and the 90s. Um, in early colour television, and uh, yeah, he's done Treasure Island, Jekyll and Hyde, and the story of the uh, Treasure Seekers. This, of course, the story of uh, Dr Mortimer, who turns up at um, Baker Street one day and says that his um, friend and uh, friend potentate and creditor, uh, Charles Baskerville, has been killed during the... Oh, it was killed a little while ago, and it looks like a hound's done it. Um, so yes, that's on Dartmoor, so obviously it's wintry and shivery and... Dr. Watson's always wrapped head to toe in tweed, um, so that's definitely autumnal. And then, just for its autumnal cover, we have um, Roots of Happiness, 100 Words for Joy and Hope. This is by Susie Dent, who is the lexicographer on um, the UK show Countdown, um, which is a uh, midweek show for the elderly and the unemployed, um, because who else is free at 2.30 in the afternoon other than the elderly and the unemployed? Um, and she's a lexicographer on that, so that when uh, a word is given um, from some of the, um, oh, what are they called, anagrams, um, when, when, whenever words are given, she checks them. She's written a book, um, 100, uh, yeah, 100 Words for Joy and Happiness. That strikes me as a rather autumnal tree. Again, it's rather cosy. Um, my maternal grandmother got me this a few weeks ago. This was 16.99 from Waterstones, um, so I chastised her rightly for... Um, wasting a load of money um, on something that I, I will enjoy, but something that isn't nearly going to give me as much to as what she could have spent her money on. This is a signed copy. Um, so yeah, it's got... What, what's going on? So it, it just gives it random words for joy and happiness. Oops, serendipity there is one of the words that supposedly symbolise joy and happiness, although I think that would, um, I would... I would argue against that. Ebullient iridescent, all of which um, can be crossed off in your Joe Spivey verbiage bingo, quiddle, plodge. I've no idea what the hell she's, you know, she's done writing that, but I'm sure it'll be interesting at some extent. But yeah, an autumnal front, um, so that pretty much covers that, I believe. Um, then question number three. Is there a new release that you are still waiting for? Now I am going to have to, I know I'm often, uh, I, I can come across as a bit of a, a bit of a Luddite, given that I've got an actual uh, pad and an actual pen in order to uh, note and um, consult these questions, but I'm going to have to um, consult my technological device, also known as an Apple iPhone for this, folks, because uh, I have two pictures of the uh, two new releases that I want to get hold of. If we can just avoid some of the hardcore pornography on here, we have uh, James O'Brien's How They Broke Britain, who is a um, 
murderously uh, uh, excoriative and um, critical uh, 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 caller to account of the UK government. Talks about the uh, malevolence of Boris Johnson and you know sundry others, uh, Dominic Cummings, and he has uh, written a I think it's about maybe a ten or eleven chapter book. Um, which supposedly charts um, Britain's descent into <laughs> what uh, monomania and political passivity and um, horrendous economic crashes and you know COVID pandemic mismanagement and things like that. So that should be jolly good. I've I've read his two other books, How to Be Wrong in a World Gone Right and How Not to Be Right in a World Gone Wrong or something. Um, yeah, very very astute commentator who can who is also a wordsmith and is a, a pretty good stylist. Also, I've just come across another YouTube channel. I think his name is Tim Ferris, um, and he did a two-hour-long conversation with Niall Ferguson about a year ago now, um, in which <clears throat> the esteemed historian Ferguson um, went on to <clears throat> give uh, George Orwell or Eric Blair the accolade of the uh, the um, his. Single, the single best stylist of the 20th century, um, which he just sort of left there and um, didn't defend whatsoever. Um, and if he thinks George Orwell was the best stylist of the 20th century, then uh, boy, have we got some books for him to read, folks. Um, yeah, Orwell wrote that one book on... Uh, boy, what essay was it? On the use of the English language, which essentially amounted to him saying, don't use foreign words, make sure to use a good old um, succinct monosyllabic Anglo-Saxon word instead of serendipity or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not sure about that. But anyway, that, that was a, a mild diversion. And then my other new release that I'm still waiting for is, uh, it's also political, you know, I'm a big old politico, I'm absolutely frothing for it. Um, this is The Plot. Uh, the Political Assassination of Boris Johnson by Nadine Dorries, who now ought to be known as the um, single biggest uh, parliamentary uh, recusant that you will ever, ever come across, because she, for six, seven or eight months, I believe at a time, took a wage for, uh, 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 as part of the tax burden of Great Britain and Northern Ireland um, for being a standing member of Parliament and did not once go and consult her constituents during that time. All she did was um, stand on the misfortunes of the working class as a reason as to why she wasn't admitted into the House of Lords. Of course, it wasn't because she was working class that she wasn't admitted into the House of Lords. It's because she didn't do her job and she is incapable of telling the truth. Um, I've read some of the reviews of this. The one in The Guardian was excellent, um, really, uh, uh, really jovial and jaunty and quite spiky uh, and ironic. Really, really good. And um, <clears throat> I think the nail in the coffin will be um, the fact that David Icke sort of commented the other week and said that uh, uh, this confirmed all of his suspicions heretofore. And if there's one thing that you don't want, it's David Icke coming across and telling you that what you've written um, completely subscribes to his theories. Um, so that those are the two um, qu uh, releases that I'm on the lookout for. Um, of course, they're going to be 27 uh, thousand pounds to purchase new in the stores so unless one uh, happens to sort of you know wingspan its way in here like a like a bird of prey I'm probably not going to get a hold of them for a very very long time but that 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 you know such is life uh, question number four three books you want to read by the end of the year now we have three here as soon as we have um, a little bit of non-fiction November left after we've read the rise and fall of the Third Reich I've got three non-fiction things here to sink my teeth into um, two of which will be rereads and one will be never read before. Um, so we have uh, Matthew Debatua's, De, ooh, I'm going to struggle with that, De, yeah, Debatua's Self and I. Uh, will Self, who is, I think Martin Ames called one of two only true rebels that he'd ever known, um, ha, was, was a, a sort of a fly's eyelid away from winning the Booker Prize in 2010 with his novel Umbrella. He's in a neo-modernist trilogy, Umbrella, Shark and Phone. All of his early stuff is really, really uh, welcome to me. And this is a book by, yeah, it's a, it's a memoir of literary ambition. Uh, Abetua was an employed amanuensis for self in, when will it have been? I think it was probably the early 90s. Yeah, early 90s, uh, from the rise of new labour to the slow decline of the literary establishment and the emergence of the internet, self and I set in a time that burns brightest in its final hour. It is a frank and very funny account of a young, hopeful writer who finds himself alongside one of his heroes, only to discover that literary ambition comes at a price. 
This is essentially, a, a, I think, like a, a few month long jamboree. All they do is smoke marijuana and um, probably eat Doritos and occasionally type something on a typewriter. Uh, Abeti was now a senior professor of creative writing somewhere down south at the University of North, uh, 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 University of East Anglia or, or you know, Surrey or Torquay or Exeter or something like that. Um, so he's part of university faculty, so he hasn't quite made it as much as self did. But yeah, I, I read this, uh, I think I read this essentially on uh, when I was meeting an ex-girlfriend all the way down south. I had four or five hours on a train there and back, and I think I got through it essentially in there um, a couple of years back. <coughs> I have um, the, uh, the Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire by Stephen Kershaw. There has been a social contagion go around the internet, as per usual, um, in which a... Um, um, a Hypothetical girlfriend asks her boyfriend uh, just how often it is that he talks or thinks about the um, Roman Empire, and this is supposed to entail all sorts of um, patriarchal masculinity and to sh to highlight the gendered disconnect between men and women because apparently loads of men think about it three or four times a day or something bizarre like that. I only ever think about it when I flush the loo because, of course, I believe it was the, the Romans that introduced toilets to Britain or plumbing systems to Britain. Um, but yeah, this is a um, this concise yet compelling narrative history of the Roman Empire covers over 500 years from its rise in 27 BC to the barbarian incursions and the fall of Rome in AD 476. Um, that would be... I've had this for ages and never got round to it. I think it's going to be a little bit um, jading and a little bit... Uh, yeah, you know, it says concise, so I think it's going to be um, a little banal and benign, but I know embarrassingly little about the Roman Empire, so I am actually going to get through this uh, probably in December. And then, of course, we have, I think, the one of the... Um, for its length, this is definitely the widest book that I own. This is almost square. This is uh, The Lives and Letters of Lord Byron, Selected Letters and Journals. This is, of course, a reread. This is, you know... Clutched, um, clutched as my family crest all the time. This is an absolutely excellent book. Um, yeah, with with snapshots of Byron's stuff. Um, this is Lady Byron's quotation. He is the absolute monarch of words and uses them as Bonaparte did lives for conquest. That is um, Annabella Milbank, who became Lady Byron, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, but it's got stuff about Lady Caroline Lamb. It's got stuff about um, Augusta Lee, obviously. It's got stuff about Napoleon. It's got stuff about, yeah, all the lot. Um, and so this would be a good start to one of my Byron read-alongs, which is going to feature in one of the questions in just a moment. So I'll plop those on the floor as well. Then question five. Are there any books that could shock you and be your favourite book of the year? Um, and if that means uh, any books that I'm about to get through in for the remainder of November and December, uh, whether any of those are going to somehow shock me and be the best of the year, I highly doubt it. Um, I'll probably do a favourites list for everything that I read in 2023 at some point in December, if such a uh, listing would be wanted by my baying mob, um, then yes, of course I'll do that, but I've read some damn good stuff this year, and I don't have anything particularly excellent or new on the horizon, so I doubt it, but, you know, I'm always willing to be surprised and fiddled with. Uh, question six, this is the final one. Have you started making reading plans for next year yet? And I believe I pretty much have, folks, because um, it has been uh, 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 tempting... Oh, I've tempted it for very, very long, for a very long time. I have um, got in mind a plan to do a Byron read-along. Um, some point reasonably soon. We're going to do, uh, I don't know quite how I'm going to structure it. I think I'm going to do biography uh, and get through that quite quickly. I've got a um, Life and Legend by Fiona McCarthy, which I'm told is a little limited. There's one by, the name's going to not be in my mind. Uh, I can't remember. There's a huge one, uh, one done by a bloke, one done by a woman. I can't remember their names. Uh, Marshand. Yes. Is it Stephen Marchand or Stephanie Marchand? There's a huge one that I need to get hold of, like a two or three volume one. Um, so yes, I'm planning to do a full Byron read-along. We're going to start with the biography and then um, we're going to intersect the biography as we go along the work. So we're going to start with Hours of Idleness, English Bards and Scotch Reviewers, Child Harold, then, you know, Corsair, Abydos, more Child Harold, and then everything else that he did, you know, throughout his life. Don Juan in particular, because Penguin Classics, I believe, do a full... Um, just standalone Don Juan, which I'd like to get hold of. Yeah, we're going to go through Byron with a fine-tooth comb 
and um, discover something about him that the academic world has heretofore left undiscovered. Um, but that's pretty much it. I will sort of nod along um, like an obsequious dog to any of the other booktube events that may be circulating. So I don't know, you'll have to leave down in the comments whether there's anything in Jan you know, December, January, February, March that I can, um, you know, if, 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 if there are such bandwagons that I can jump on, then I'll be more than happy to. Um, but I'm going to take a brief little sip of orange juice and uh, that's laced with vodka, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, and I'm essentially going to bid adieu. I do have um, just three honourable mentions just before the end of this video. Most of you have gone anyway, so this place is a ghost town by, by the time we are um, north of the territory of 20 minutes. My dad has an excellent book collection. Of course, we are here in the, uh, the Virgin's Emporium, as per usual, uh, and I'll just get out a few more of these uh, toys that he does. Uh, this, I believe, is a very, very small atomic nuclear bomb. Um, which is very, very, very distasteful, I'm sure you'll agree, given that that has taken the lives of so many. Um, but are there any soldiers that I haven't yet showed you? But for example, he does have, uh, uh, you know, many, many books such as um, Tanks of World War II. Uh, this is this amounts essentially to a bit of a colouring book. Um, you've got, he's got, you know, 101 uh, paintings over here. Um, what's this? Famous aircraft of all time, army badges and insignia of World War II, Napoleon's cavalry. So I think I am going to do a bit of a um, tour of all of his uh, um, militaria, his non-fiction militaria, because he's got all sorts of stuff downstairs um, that would make that would have made you know General Haig look like a pauper. Um, uh, but, but yeah, I've got three books that I, two of which are mine, and one that I just found in his possession. Uh, this is Kingsley Amos's Lucky Jim. Uh, it's in his hilarious send-up of academic life, Kingsley Amis poked devastating fun at a very British way of life and gave post-war fiction a new and enduring figure to laugh and laugh at. Um, so that was, yeah, that's jolly good. I remember reading that when I was sort of 16 or 17 when I haven't quite, when I hadn't quite got into reading, when I hadn't decided to be a reader. Um, if such an aesthetic is to be honoured with a uh, mention here. Um, I remember reading that and, um, yeah, finding myself completely enveloped. Um, we have The Old Boys by William Trevor. Again, this is mine, but something I found in my dad's collection from years ago. Um, the little world of a public school with its grudges and rivalries reaches out into the little world of the aged as the old boys grimly battle over the post of president of the association. That's the old boys there. Look, they are such old boys. And we also have Alison Weir's The Lady in the Tower, The Fall of Anne Boleyn. Um, which talks about whether it was that she was in somehow league with goodness knows who, the Spanish Inquisitors, in order to, to down Henry VIII, or whether Cromwell um, concocted some sort of scandal around her in order to get rid of her, or whether she wa actually was plotting to have her um, Henry meet his maker. Who knows? But yes, that looks like a very interesting book to me. Again, just something my dad has lying around, which no other father would just have lying around. Um, but yes... I think, ladies and gents, that just about covers it. I've got uh, an absolute melee of books all around me now, um, but I am probably going to say goodbye just now. I hope you enjoyed this uh, end-of-year book tank. It's been a rather extended video. Um, but yes, please let me know your answers to the questions um, down below in comments. And uh, yes, we'll have a good chat about it down there. But yes, other than that, uh, thank you, BookTube.